and welcome to Magrathia Builder Worlds. This is going to be a Necromunda scenery build. Um, it's January, it's dark, it's cold, it's pouring down with rain. We're in lockdown. Frankly, this is what model making has been made for. Can't play games, can't go anywhere, can't do anything. I could sit out here in a workshop and get on and build and create. So, uh, the last two or three videos have been uh, other things, fantasy stuff, Lord of the Rings and Burrows and Badgers. And there's more of that to come in the next few weeks. But I've got so many burning ideas for Necromunda. I wanted to get back and build some Necromunda stuff. Now, I started on this uh, Pier Town Necromunda scenery project in August last year. I think the first video came out. Um, and uh, in all that time, I've only actually painted one bunch of figures. Uh, so this scenery build today is going to be about that bunch of figures that I've painted. And I, when I say a bunch, uh, it's hardly even a gang because there's only like five and a couple of bits on a vehicle painted, which is kind of like a bunch of enforcers. I'm currently working on then the Pier Town Shore Division, PTSD, um, uh, of the enforcers from Precinct 13. So this build is going to be about building Precinct 13. Now... Um, Come over here and have a look at these models. I quite like them. You might have seen this model in an unpainted form uh, on one of my other scenery builds, but now it's pretty much done. And this is what I call a Sump Rider. Of course, it's based on a uh, Mechanicus, Adeptus Mechanicus Dune Rider. But in this case, yeah, I love the hovercraft element of this and the landing craft element of this. So this is very much made to be the enforcer's vehicle for of choice for getting across the sump surface. Shore division then require a vehicle that is able to go on both the sump and land, which is what this is perfect for. On the uh, sump wall builds, there's a ramp out of the water and there'll be a ramp down onto the uh, pier town side of things. And this sump rider works perfectly well as a hovercraft. Of course, it beautifully has flap down landing ramp for which the crew can go ashore at the moment these are just enforcers made here uh, but i've got a bunch of subjugators that are being made as well now just out of shot on this you can also see my next vehicle i'm working on which is also a sump vehicle this is a converted land speeder the one that has all the scouts hanging off it and this is going to be a, a sump shore patrol vehicle as well. I haven't given this one a name yet, but this is a, a pretty cool. I'm going to have enforcers on this rather than the Space Marine Scouts. It's going to be lightly armed and much faster than the sump rider. I don't really see it having a um, as heavy armament either. But these things have really kind of piqued my interest. The sump wall has really piqued my interest as well. Now, if you've watched a lot of this series, and I'm hoping if you're a subscriber, you've watched it all. If you haven't watched a lot of this series, this is the first of my Necromunda videos. Uh, then uh, first question is, where have you been? Uh, second question is, why haven't you subscribed already? In fact, if this is the first time you've seen one of my Necromunda videos, press pause now, subscribe now, go back and watch the other videos, all of them, and this will make an awful lot more sense when you get back here. If you have subscribed and you have watched the other videos, then you'll know that this is my plan for my Necromunda scenery build. These are all the little squares, uh, a couple of rectangles that I made for my modular board plan. Come down here, I'll show you where we got to. Here then is the original plan for what I had for Pier Town. Um, it's, as you can see, a four foot by four foot table that was the idea uh mostly with modular bits that i can move around i'd actually made 12 out of these 16 tiles um i'd made all of these by well, this one but this one was in here instead so i've got the sump wall with a ramp and jetties and bits and pieces we've got uh Crocs Bar, this is where I first started. This is the Slum Stack, that's three videos. We've got um, Sluggers, Guns and Ammo down here in a container. We've got Cindy's Chop Shop over here, and we've got the Land Raider Hovel Build as well. Plus the Dock Slop Shop. 
And what I haven't made, built then are the remaining one, two, three, four squares, which I do want to do in the next little while, but I'm not going to rush at them. I do need to make a square that's got a ramp down from this ramp up from the water. That makes complete sense. Um, this tile here with zone mortalis corners and walls, I want to become a market. So it's similar to my high street stuff, or my, my big shops, but uh, several traders all on one. This is going to be a raised walkway area that's going to hopefully uh, line up with the slum stack. And actually, the thing that I'm most stuck with at the moment is this one over here, which I had planned to be a sector house. If you remember, cast your mind back ages and ages ago, I've got a brush steel lamp stand that wants to make part of that. But the problem is, is I really, really enjoyed making this bit over here, the sump sump wall and i'd like to extend out into the sump this is pier town so piers going out onto the sump it's really cool i've also got a thing i've got to admit i've also got a thing about settlements on water on stilts um on low-lying areas i love the concept of the city of venice uh, for my boroughs and badgers games i've got a, a marsh town with with buildings on tiny little islands i really like the idea for necromunda as well so i want to build out in the sump and as i was saying as the only war band war gang that i've built anything for and painted so far is for the enforcers it makes absolute sense for the enforcers precinct to, to be out on the water so this is going to be quite a large build and it's going to involve um quite a lot of digging through the cack i've got a great thing to start this build with though you really really need to check this out so we're going to make an enforcers precinct house a sector house for my enforcers for the shore division um and uh, uh i'm going to build quite a few enforcers I'm not so worried about this from a game point of view or a campaign point of view. The enforcers I've made so far, I've just made because I like the different poses and bits and pieces. I'm not fact about how they actually work out in the game. I've, a lot of this stuff I'm currently building, I'm building for uh, because it's fun. I've got a narrative running through my mind. Um, and I actually ended up playing and how effective they are in the game is very much to me um, a secondary thing. Uh, I'm not massively competitive when it comes to these kind of games i say that until i start playing and i really really want to win but actually uh, a theme and uh, a narrative for me is far more important in a, a series of games be it necromunda or burrows and badgers or lord of the rings or anything else that i play um rather than he who has got the bestest and could put the uh, uh ultimate power combos together i've never been a, a power combo kind of player i like stories um so I want to build a really cool precinct house for my uh, enforcers and I need a really great thing to actually add, act as the base. It's going to be, uh, the sector house is going to be on the water. Um, I, I don't want it to move around. Uh, it's going to be pretty much stationary and I've got just the thing that is going to be absolutely perfect for this build. And here it is. Check this out. This is Playmobil. Um, if you don't know Playmobil, it's one of the coolest kids' toys ever invented. It was invented in the 70s. I remember playing with the first bits of it in the UK uh, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, my dad was a, an international gym, international gym coach. He used to go abroad and bring me home really, really cool stuff. Uh, then it moved. Uh, it's German, but they opened a huge factory here, actually right here, just down the road from here in Basildon. Uh, and playing ball is very cool stuff. This is a roll on roll off ferry, car ferry. It's really cool. And I think it's gonna make an epic start for my precinct. Come and have a closer look down here. So this is a very cool model. Um, what do we need to know about it? First of all, uh, it's 20 inches long. This is not gonna fit on a one foot tile. It's gonna have to go on a two foot tile. It's also, 11 inches wide so it's going to have to go on a two foot by one foot tile convenient because i think i've got one just here so let's have a look at some of these features then first of all it's got these cool ramps um that 
are there to drive your trucks and your cars on and off the ferry. In this case, I'm probably going to model this with one ramp up actually completely vertical and then one that is down low so I can drive my sump rider up onto it. It's pretty severe as a ramp goes, but that way there, I'm going to keep them part of this open for me to be able to park up patrol vehicles. Um, and that's quite cool. Now, so hello to you, Vicar Zorlock. He normally won't get to play around on the precinct, but just so from a scale point of view, we can see that actually he works. The rails are a bit thick and heavy, but actually they're pretty cool. Um, we've got platforms. We've got lower levels we can see down here with windows and bits and pieces. It's even got staircases, which aren't too bad. The figures can go on. Um, it's got a control conning tower here. It's going to need more structure. I want walkway across here over the top i want more structure up this end um which i can have gun tower on and we can have kind of like cells and various other things that um they need then it needs crew accommodation that kind of thing i've got to work very hard for this to not look like a piece of playmobil this entire project then is going to be about taking a kid's plastic toy and turning it into something that will work in the world of Necromunda. I've got a number of other Playmobil uh, toys that I'm going to turn into Necromunda models, but this is by far the absolute biggest. Um, so from that point of view, I want to get on with this. This is going to be quite a challenge, I think. I'm hoping that in some ways this will become a whole board by itself. I'm going to see if I can get it down to the point where I can play a game of Necromunda on a two foot by one foot sector house for enforcers i wonder if that's possible who knows <laughs> now this necromunda build is being made partly possible by my very good friend edward jackson who clearing out who's a, a prodigious model maker uh and he paint does commission work and paints things and has been wargaming well probably as long as i have um and he makes awesome, awesome models as well. And much like me and most other gamers, he's got all sorts of assorted crap uh, and cack that sits around in boxes. And he's been able to be clear out recently and he decided recently that um, very kindly he was concerned about the fact that I was running out of cack. So Edward has sent me a box of cack. So today I will be digging through this cack and I will be digging through a whole load of other Necromunda and 40k related cack as well. There is so much in here. But it's... First stage update then. What have we achieved? Well, so far I have stuck the ferry down onto the wooden scenery tile. The one foot by two foot bit of ply. Um, I've also then gone right around the bottom of it. And uh, so it's stuck on with um, all purpose clear solvent based adhesive. And then I've gone around all the way around the bottom of it and used flexible PU, uh, polyfiller uh, to give um, some wave kind of watery stuff there as it moves up and down, fill in the gaps, and then the rest of the board will be covered in my normal sump method, which is going to be using Mod Podge and tissue paper. This ramp at the moment is left movable. The other ramp has been removed. That's going to be completely, well, it was going to be completely upright and just left there solid to make an end wall. But... If you recently have watched my scenery showcase with my 40mm pirate scenery, if you haven't, why the hell not? It's quite interesting. It's got nothing to do with Necromunda, um, but it's definitely there. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's probably because you haven't subscribed to my channel. Go back and subscribe to my channel now, and then you get to see it. But you, if you have seen that, video you will have seen how i store my scenery and the fact i've been moving loads of scenery crates around and you know that thing about when you stop looking for something you find it what was cool was when i moved scenery crates and could get drawers behind them i found necromunda gold or in this case original 1995 necromunda bulkheads Quite a few of them. <laughs> uh, and um, I knew I had some somewhere, but I just haven't been out finding the damn things for six months. Oh, look, there's some more here. Look, 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 there we go. So, um, they're very cool things in their own right. For you young'uns, if you don't remember 
Necromunda the first time round when I used to play it in the South End Games Workshop where I used to work. Um, they were really cool. They made to go with cardboard uh, scenery and you got these ones with solid bulkheads on this side and four little bulkhead bits here and every single one had a ladder on. You then got ones with kind of like gothic-y windows which is quite cool and you got this one with the kind of like the cross brace on it with the, the skull in the middle I like that one too and then you got this brilliant one which has got a doorway in it now that gives me tons of potential not only for this model but for loads of other models but then what turned out was really cool let's move some of those out of the way in yeah, one of those it's just meant to be kind of moments which we call serendipity I took my new, newly found 1995 bulkheads and I placed one on the back of the ferry thus and I thought hey that's going to look quite cool I then took another one of a similar style lo and behold as if by magic serendipity took place and these two things fit in perfectly across the stern of the boat as if they were made to measure look at that that's just like way cool um so before i've even started really digging through the cack and trying to find stuff i've now decided that the main structure on my uh precinct has got to be made with these things because uh just by having those two there and by maybe having one with a doorway over here and uh possibly because it's on the inside one of the open bits like that i can then start to build a structure at this end still leaving me all of this space here for parking um some riders and the like inside and having a work bay which is the plan for that so i'm <laughs> really pleased with that i'm going to start work on this idea first of all then before i even have to go and dig in the cack anymore i need to find some sheets of plastic card um, and work out how I can actually make this work for me, how I can have rooms. Because I want rooms that are accessible that I can get into, but I'd also like a bit of a kind of stack here of, of different things um, to make more out of this model. It's very cool indeed. I'm very pleased. Stuck the ferry down on the board, deliberately not in the middle. Um, over the back it's right up against the edge and it's right over against this edge over here but this gives me this end so I can have lift up the ramp if I want to and it also gives me two and a half inches um, of gap here because what I want to do is have a, a key side jetty or pontoon that floats here and I'm going to take a dremel and cut out this bit here so that will be a doorway up from the jetty into um the main part of the vessel so when crews of things like the sump speeder um come alongside here they'd be able to get out and go on board and it'll get moored up or if other vessels have to come to the precinct they can moor up outside and come in so those are the jobs i need to do first of all i've got to take a dremel or another cutting device and cut out a bit here um dremel is probably going to be quickest and then i'm going to start to work on the jetty outside find some suitable stuff for that gonna have to go dig in through the cack and then i'm gonna start to work on how i'm gonna make this back section over here uh, into something workable i mean i might just do it with for a start more of these bulkheads which is quite cool although we'll see how we go with that i'll play around in a moment okay here we go we'll see if we can cut through this now bit of dremel action Oh, just like a real engineer on a real ship, but... Because you get a delightful smell of burning plastic. But, it's doing a job and it's an awful lot easier than other tools, so... Let's have it. We had to trim that up, make it nice and neat in a minute. You'd be good to saw a lot because currently managed to get on board. 
stood in the entrance while you're there. I'm going to just trim out a few bits of plastic and that's going to look quite neat. So with a, a pontoon here and then a step up, that'd be quite cool. Um, of course, it'll be much better if I didn't use ubiquitous oil lock and stood uh, an enforcer in the space there. There you go. That's far more intimidating. That's very cool. I like that. Okay, so that's the Dremelin done from a doorway. Now I'm going to mess around with thinking about how I'm going to make this back section on the pre of the precinct. So for me then, half the fun of making this kind of model is actually this part now. It's coming up, the tinkering around and trying to figure out what's what. Um, uh, like I said, I'm really pleased to have got these old school Necromunda bulkheads. They're going to be really great. I'll have to uh, trim the tops off where they that's where they lock together. Although, if I'm going to build several layers, I might not. But the thing is, if I don't, it will prevent me getting my hands inside. But I could easily build up a back layer like that um, and certainly higher up um, I can use the cross beams in the windows and things to give give a bit more kind of like open into it so a bit more of an old school necromon feel but on the bottom I want it to have a definite kind of solid wall you ain't getting in kind of feel to it so I'm going to go with the big bulkheads on the back like that they'll end up getting stuck down um, and then over here on this side, I think I might have solid bulkhead up here. Um, I want to keep, can we see over here, there's a doorway with a hatch on it, which is quite cool. There's another one on this side. So I want to keep access to that because that's access to the engine rooms. Um, so I might as well keep that. Uh, and I also then can have a doorway over here. Um, it's a little bit wider here, this. The, the ramp entrance is a bit thinner, but if I could do that, I can have a doorway off the main deck. Um, and then I'm tempted to use one here. I'm going to go on the side like that. That's so cool because that fits perfectly. Um, and then either have another here. I mean, in some ways it would make sense if I make it a squarish building um, and it all just works on these, but because that way there I can have a door at the bottom of that set of steps so they can step out of that and go up there to the control room uh, which is quite neat which overlooks the main part of the jetty and stuff because this is going to need layer in here and then this will make a really still make a really cool control room actually um, figure on the walkway works but up here he needs to be higher up so that needs a stepped up floor but that'll be really cool Right, so, uh, and then on this side, doesn't matter, there's no stairs there, so I can go completely solid or a bit windowy and run that right across there. So I think that my, my first decision is to, yeah, bring this back so it's going to make a solid structure with the hole. Thing like that that's going to give me my size of my tower and my built up section on the back of the precinct house that makes the most sense and then what i could probably do is cut off all of these and put a solid plastic card base on there and then have another level of structure there that'll be cool that will already start to make it look a bit more 40k necromundary um before i do anything else which is great okay so this is the main unit base of the the main structure now stuck in place um which i'm happy with i haven't put stuck in this cell here but i'm definitely thinking along those lines although if i can find something with a better door i'm going to use that i'm going to use one of these clear gothic -y window types inside in the cell so somebody looking in could look at a prisoner who sat in there or whatever else I'm, I'm saying it's a cell it could be something else but that works quite well as a as a thing It'd be good for a scenario Go raid the uh, precinct to get your, your gang member back. So now I have to find jetties to go along here. And i got to find more stuff to make the superstructure over here on top of the uh, um, starting of the accommodation on the tower. I've got loads of room still for vehicles, the sump rider and the like. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the Orc Mech Boy kit 
that I've got to uh, uh, make up uh, a mechanics bay probably under here over here I think uh, if you can't really see that um, but that'll be quite cool I want to have a bridge going across these two ramps here I've got to put something inside here there's a lot to do uh, and a lot to find out so the next best thing I think is I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go digging through the cack. Yes, indeed. That's what we're going to do. In fact, I'm going to go so much cack to go digging through and I'll be able to do it on a little space like this. I'm going to have to go and spread a load of it out. But I am going to use, I'm going to use quite a lot of uh, funky necromundary bits on this to kind of like, Disguise this very smooth plastic superstructure. Uh, let's go and see what I can find. So this is a big project and it's going to need a lot of stuff. So we're going to have to go digging through the cack in a big way. So here is a load of cack. Actually, most is not cack at all. Look, it's like still model stuff on sprues, like bits of fortress and bits of some kit that I can't remember what it's called this week um, and various other things so I'm going to start sifting through all this seeing what I can find Mwahaha. gang stuff so railings and things are quite cool no more toilets that is just going to automatically up the kind of like necromundry level of stuff, piping and plates and things. Definitely got to have pipes. Um, right, I need to make a pile of stuff. So the key to this part of this conversion work is making this thing look 40k necromundry. I don't want to lose this walkway because it works really well for figures, but I want to neck them under up this side. And I'm thinking, taking off this handrail, putting in bits of the gang stronghold. I can use that across there. I'll be able to get three bits in there. And that will give me the, the possibility of putting the um, top section on. Pretty much spent the entire evening fiddling around with cack. Um, let's have a quick glance around my living room. Look, cack, loads of cack, 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 cack. Uh, I'm in by the fire this evening rather than the workshop. A number of things that I want to do, as you can see, there's cack all over the deck of the ship, too. Um, one of the things I want to do, there was a little chimney on this bit here, and I want to remove this and put a Big thermoplasmic malarkey thing on it. One of these lads. Uh, I was thinking about building this up and putting that on there. But the cool thing about Playmobil is it doesn't come like this in a box. You have to assemble some of it. And that I managed to squeeze out and take out completely. And then what was even cooler, again from a serendipity point of view for this model, was that that drops right in there. It, there is a slight lower in here so I've had to you see that yeah um, that's going to need a piece of plastic card cut out to fit in there but then that will sit on there really nicely and start to help build up the 40 k of this model the problem with using this big Playmobil model are all these really smooth sides Playmobil gives texture and by adding stickers and things this is all really smooth which is going to be a bit of a nightmare to paint so the more I can 40k up the better to be honest um, I'm thinking of having down here a thermoplasmic conduit thing with bits on that that will work quite nicely that will just do that there and I'm working on I'm trying to figure out a way of putting the jetty on the side I was worried at one point I'll be using lots of these things and uh, wall tops and stuff it doesn't matter frankly, because they're going to go on the model and I'll just replace them. Um, and it's the same with the, the things from the stronghold. That would be really cool because you'd be able to see water through underneath it. But this is a stronghold, so using stronghold components on it makes absolute sense. So I'm thinking of having a traditional kind of like oil drum type 
support for my pontoons, my jetties. Make up a load of old drums because I appear to have thousands of them. They'll be about the right height there. It's going to be more than those, just those four, but I'll float that there. That'll float on old drums. They'll be visible. I'll be able to put more of the uh, filler sump water around them. And then I'll do similar over here. I'll cut that round bit off there. And I think that's how I'm going to have a jetty. Then that's we should be high enough for some of my vehicles, but there'll be a cool step up there as well. So there's now a step into here. I've got an area here that I can have guys shooting through. Uh, then around the other side, I haven't worked out what's going on yet. Um, the uh, bridge of the ferry is going to have a platform in here with controllers and stuff. Uh, I'm going to have the odd thermoplasma conduit pipe here. I want to keep a lot of this clear because I want to be able to move vehicles in and out. But I want to be able to get at least two. I'm probably going to get myself another sand rider. Um, under here, uh, I'm going to have some tools and it's going to be the uh, engineer's work bay. So I might blank out one of the windows there and have stuff hanging up. I was going to use some of the Orc Met Boy stuff there. Some of it will fit, some of it's too big. I've got half cut out. Well, I know what I've done with it. Here we go. This is a plastic card lid that's going to go on here. And I'm going to build a second layer with the um, 1995 bulkheads. Start giving it this more height. Uh, this will be crew accommodation, I think. And um, uh, maybe an office, uh, your commander's office, that type of thing. So that might have more of these so you can see it clearly across the sump. I suppose one of the things that I really like about this kind of project is just the ability to sit and fiddle and play with stuff and try things out. I wanted a, a walkway from this side to this side. The problem is, is that I also want to be able to park sump riders in there, turn around. And they're much taller. But uh, and I've played around with a couple of different ideas, but now I've removed these handrails. These staircases are gonna work beautifully, not only they're gonna work beautifully with one of these connectors in the middle. And it should, if I stick it together, reach one side to the other. Which is going to be absolutely perfect. So I'm going to stick that together, put the handrails on. Jobs are good and well pleased with that. Okay, so this is the uh, where I got to after the first evening of building on the superstructure. Uh, we've got now got the pontoon out the front here, having cut out the doorway. Um, inside the bridge. We've now got uh, a platform and various control panels and bits and pieces there. I've added a LED light holder that's going to go on top of that as well. The ship's main structure, superstructure, has now been built. This is all stuck on a solid, including. There's going to hold in cell here. Here, this is going to be where the weapons are going to be in bits and pieces. So that'll be it. Armory. We've got thermoplasmic conduit on the back here, just looking kind of funky and 40 ke. I've made the second layer. That's the first floor, um, which is going to end up probably end up being a med bay. Uh, going to have a platform on here to take the water tower, and this here we'll have another layer on it which will be the commander's cabin and control center i've also got this is one cool thing that i got from a work thing which is this is the chain from the inside of a, a big old wooden chest which i'm going to cut in half and i'm going to mount on the sides with chain going down into the water holding the whole thing down 
um, to the bottom of the sump, which would be quite cool. I also did this staircase, which now goes over, doesn't balance very well at the minute, goes over the uh, main loading bay, which is quite cool, I'll be up and over. It's gonna look pretty neat. It's also gonna be good from a play point of view, game point of view. Um, characters running backwards and forwards. There's a control panel on the back of this one. I can't imagine the dock master stood up here as a, some riders are, are brought in for repair and that kind of thing, so that was quite cool. This now is the main superstructure build completed. I'm happy with the way this is going so far. The bits that aren't stuck on yet, but we can see the whole thing in place. Um, I'm loving this staircase over the middle. That's got an LED light holder underneath it, so that will be able to light up and glow as the vehicles arrive. Then on the back of the structure, we've got the main tower. Now I'm assuming that the crew accommodation is below decks, um, but then here we have several layers of tower. On the top, we've got a water tower. Now I've got to go and check and make sure this model actually fits into the crate I've got designated for it with the water tower on it. Otherwise the water tower might not be able to be, able to be stuck on permanently um, but if we take off the water tower we can take off this lid here um, that gives us access to this layer this layer is going to be the commander's cabin the nice gothic windows is going to have commander's accommodation in there beds and also some control kit so we can oversee and keep in contact with everybody else Okay, it's late at night, so we're in the living room. And uh, I think this is the end of the first video. I've got all the main superstructure now complete. There's the stairs in place. I've started to think about detailing. The detailing is gonna be what makes this. I just wanted to put shore division vehicles and crew on just so we can start to get an idea of what it's gonna look like. The answer is rather spiffing. This bay has actually got room for two sump riders, which is cool. This is the uh, sump speeder down by the side. Darren, Darren, if you're watching this, I'll have that other land speeder storm because I'd like to do one that's just empty sitting at the back over there, one without a crew on it. So I could crew it up if I need to, that would look really fucking cool. This is the, gonna be by far the biggest model I've made from Necromunda so far. Uh, it's rapidly becoming more about building cool worlds than it is necessarily about playing games. I don't know how this would possibly feature in a game. Well, I'm building lots of game build, gameable elements into it. I've decided with a number of things, I'm not sticking them on and putting them in place. I said I was going to work out the mechanics bay, and apart from blocking out the window over there, I've got tools and things that are going to go in there, but it's going to be so damn fiddly to paint them. Uh, if I stick them all in, I'm going to have to, be, I think painting them separately, sticking them in. And that's why I'm not sticking in this staircase. And just when you think you're done with the superstructure, you decide that what would be really cool is if there's some kind of entranceway, archway type thing um, at the other end of the vessel to balance up the back end being really, really heavy and we want something to kind of guard the entrance and have weapons on it. For vehicles going in and out so i'm playing it around so i'm playing around with this um i want to support support some kind of gun under here um and then that way there we've got again more levels more playability um and i think it will look pretty cool the one thing that this whole precinct thing is totally missing at the moment is any form of self-defense obviously apart from it's kind of like crew it hasn't got any weapon systems, which I think is a bit uh, short-sighted. So we might have to add some weapon systems. 
<clears throat> then that really will be the end of the first part of this construction. I think. This is the main superstructure of the model then, about as done as I'm going to get. Um, with the late addition of this entranceway, um, I've cut away the side of the, the ramp here so it will now stand up. So, you know, if I'm actually playing games when I want to get secure, it can actually fold that up, prevent people getting in. But I've added this entrance arch. Still got a big gap here because it needs some kind of weapon system to go in there. Um, but the main build is done. The main build then uh, has included the back administration tower, which has got is needs all the detail done inside, but is going to have uh, a cell, an armory, a med bay, and a commander's uh, cabin up the top. We've got some detailing in the um, bridge here. We've added the pontoon on the outside here. We've cut out a bit here for entrance in and out there. We've got this great bridge across there and control bay for bringing vehicles in and out there. We've started to think about how we're going to add details for a, a mechanics bay over the other side. We've got the thermoplasmic generator over this side over here. Um, that's an, a lot of construction, and I'm really, really excited about this model. So from that point of view, it's really cool. The next video then is going to be about the detailing of all of this. I think I'm going to have to get myself another box of enforcers, and I definitely need the Severina uh, figure from Forgewell, because I think that she's going to become my overall commander of my uh, enforcers. There's going to be quite a few of them. Okay, so I'm really happy with this build so far. Um, it's the biggest model I've made for Necromunda. And in many ways, it kind of like exemplifies what I'm about from a builder of worlds point of view. This isn't so much a kind of a thing that's going to be really great in games, so much as helping just build that idea of what my part of the underhive and the sump sea looks like. I'm trying to make it really useful for games. I reckon there could be some really cool scenarios around trying to kind of like get in or get out or various other things. Um, I'm making sure there are plenty of platforms and layers and levels and different things and ways in um, and access from the outside so it could become useful in a scenario. But actually the most important thing for me is about taking that idea, that theme for part of the table and building that theme. So I want to make the crew for the precinct. You know, not just the enforcers, but I need either mechanic or servitors i need it needs somebody in the med bay it needs its own commander rather than just the guy who's the kind of like the, the sergeant lead of of the enforcers that kind of thing um so it's becoming far more than just a bit of necromunda terrain uh, in many ways it's becoming a little world in its own way and although i absolutely love tabletop wargaming from a modeling point of view this is really cool it's really exciting um the challenges going forward for the next video are to get rid of all these nice smooth Playmobil plastic uh, panels and make it look far more grim, dark, necromunda, rusty, crappy, on the sump, that kind of thing. It hasn't got any weapon systems yet and it definitely is crying out for weapon systems. Um, <laughs> I haven't really thought about it from a game point of view, but you know, it's, it's a heavily uh, fortified thing out in the sump it needs to be able to protect itself i kind of like picture gangs of warlocks turning up in barges and boats very kind of like water world kind of style and trying to sort the place um that kind of thing or or warlocks jumping in with jetpacks or i don't know van Sar on those um boards that kind of thing so it needs kind of like heavy stubbers in in turrets or, or various other defendy kind of things so i'm gonna to have to work on some of that so it needs weapon systems. It needs, obviously, the sump adding to the outside. I'm going to put the chains on. Um, there's a lot still to do, but I'm hoping it's going to turn out to be a really, really cool model. I hope that you're going to stick around and come and watch the next part of this video. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Magathia Builder of Worlds, please subscribe now. Um, check it out. Subscribe. Go back and watch all the other Necromunda builds. There are quite a few. Get an idea of what I'm about from a sump town point of view and where my Necromunda stuff is going. My plans for my uh, peer town builds and the other bits on land are getting less and less likely to happen at the moment. Or, well, put back in the schedule. They will happen. 
um, because I'm getting more and more into the idea of building other stuff now out on the sump. Peer Town is going to become a town of peers coming out from the land as much as being the, the town on the edge with a big ass pit. Um, so from that point of view, it's going to be quite cool. So where was I? Oh yeah, subscribe to this channel. Uh, I'm doing very nicely from a subscription point of view. It's very cool. If you subscribe, you will definitely then get to see um, part two of the of Precinct 13, the Sump uh, Enforcers Shore Division Precinct. Got to come up with a catchy name than that. Well, it's PTSD, isn't it? Um, you get to see that. You get to see all the other videos as well. Uh, go and uh, pick the playlist. The Necromunda playlist will come out at the end of this. You can just jump on that and go watch all the others if you haven't seen them already. Please do also leave comments down below. I love to read your comments to see what you think of the builds. Um, and make suggestions and bits and pieces. I'm not an absolute expert on the entire 40k and Necromunda range. If you think there's a thing that would be really cool worked into this or another bit out on the sump, please do make those suggestions. They're great. Darren, if you're watching this, yes, I'll have your other storm, your other land speeder storm, because I want to make another one of these just sat without a crew on it. Um, that'd be very cool. I'm going to have to get myself another dune rider as well, because I think that would also be pretty cool. I like to, I can get definitely get two in the bay. So, um, aside from that, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some inspiration um, to uh, do your own thing. Um, and uh, please make sure you come back and watch the next one. Thanks for watching Magnus Theo Builder of Worlds. I'll see you next time on the summit.